In this video, you will learn how to create a 3D sketch that can be used as the skeleton, or the basis for a frame like the one that we have right here. Let's take a quick look at this skeleton. Let's make it visible. There you can see it within the frame. Double click on that to edit it. Uh, you can see how it is. Uh, it is the outline. It is the skeleton inside the steel tubes that make up that frame. Notice the dimensions here. We end up with everything defined by just our basic overall length and width and height and then a dimension here for this rail and it's spacing up from the bottom. So let's go ahead and start with a new part. Just a standard part. And we're going to go ahead and create a 3D sketch. Normally we start a part with a 2D sketch if we're going to create an extrusion. This time we will click this drop down and start a 3D sketch. And we're going to just start drawing line by line. A few things that we need to take note of. Look down here at the bottom and you have some options uh, within 3D sketch such as uh, the ortho mode which we're going to keep turned off for now. I like to work without that ortho mode turned on but we will have dynamic dimension snap object and infer constraints selected and then leave off that uh, that tolerance option so let's go to the home view let's get this sort of isometric home view and now you might want to start by clicking right there on that origin we, we are not going to do that because that will not actually lock the end of this first line in place come over here uh, to the origin folder within the part hit the drop down and hit the center point now i have created the first endpoint of this first line on that center point now when we get started creating lines here we need to look for a few things go ahead and right click look for auto bend if auto bend is checked we want to uncheck that as we do not want to put bend between these lines within this frame everything just has sharp corners and now if you will notice these three planes down here, I'm going to click on this one, which is aligned to the YZ plane that we see down here. And when I click on that little plane indicator, that will keep everything that I'm drawing sort of on this flat plane. The view that I'm in right now, this right side view, everything that I draw, go back to home view, everything that I draw now will be flat on this plane. So let's go ahead and draw a line up. Look at the dimensions that pop up there. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit so I can get uh, get something in the size range that I want. Let's make this 23 inches and hit enter. Now I have that line that is straight up 23 inches. Let's come out to the side because again I'm still on that plane as long as I keep uh, sketching line or point to point here. It stays on that plane. Come out to the right Let's give that a dimension of 46 inches and hit enter. And I'm going to come down below. See, it snaps to that axis. See the little, uh, little icon that pops up there, the little Y parallel. That means I am parallel to the Y axis. I snapped into place going straight down. Let's not put a dimension on that one. Let's just come down and click. Now we can finish a line by double clicking, or I can come out here, click OK. Now notice what I have. See that little purple point at the end of that line? That means that is not constrained and I can still move that line up and down. If we use the equal constraint up here, that means I can click that and that. And now they are matched to each other. The endpoint of that has turned black. And everything I have on the screen so far is fully constrained and locked into place. Let's go back and start creating some more lines. Come up to the top corner here, click there. That will stick that endpoint to that corner. Now we're going to create the outline of the top of the table. So let's use this plane here, which aligns everything on the, or aligns it to the XZ plane. And we can enter dimensions as we go, but let's just drag out to the right. See, we are stuck on that red X axis. Click there come up on the blue z-axis click out here and then come click one more time back on that corner that we started with right click and say OK now let's give this table width a dimension 
Let's make that 30 inches. And notice what we have out here. We have this one line that uh, is free to move back and forth. There's a couple of ways that we can fix this to get that constrained. If we use the perpendicular constraint, click on the line that is currently free to move, and say we want it to be perpendicular to that line that is already constrained. Say OK to that. Now everything that is here is black. It is fully constrained and nothing's going to move. Let's add our other legs. Click on that corner. Come. Oh, we need to select a plane. I can use either one of these planes. That will get me going straight down. Let's click that plane. Now I'm snapping to vertical. Don't worry about the length right now. Say OK or double click. Line here. Let's click the plane again. Come down. We'll double click at the end of that one. That finishes the line. Now we have these two legs that are still free to float, free to move. Uh, the length can be changed. So we'll come back again with the equal constraint and just make them equal to that first leg that does have a dimension on it. Cancel that constraint. Now everything that we have here is black. Everything is fully constrained. Let's go back and add our line one more time and we will create the part of the skeleton that will give us this uh, rail around the bottom. So we're ready to create a line. Let's just click anywhere on these legs. As long as I click on that leg, that gives me something stuck to that leg. It creates a coincident constraint on each leg. And when I come back here, make sure that it sticks to our starting point and right click and say OK. Add a dimension. Let's go up from the bottom, make that 8 inches, and as you can see, these, uh, these four lines for the rails are still free to move. So if we use our perpendicular constraint again, perpendicular to that leg, perpendicular to that leg, make that one, and if all the rest of these are perpendicular, that means that that last that leg out there on the front is going to be fully constrained as well. So now that frame skeleton is complete, and we need to save it. Oops, I'm in sketch mode. It tells me I can't save in sketch mode. So it closed that sketch for me. Let's call this one... I'm going to call it Skeleton 2, because I've already got one called Skeleton 1. And save that. Close that file out. And then we are ready to start a new assembly where we will actually build this frame. So let's place that first component. Go in here and place Skeleton 2. Zoom out a little bit so I can see it. Click one time. It puts it in place. It snaps me to the isometric view. Now at this point, this can be moved around. So let's click on that part somewhere. And let's use the ground and root feature up here. When we ground and root, we can create flush constraints at the origin, or we can ground at the origin. This is just standard assembly um, options. Let's create. Let's just ground it at the origin. It won't create any additional constraints. And say OK. So that part is stuck in place, and we are ready to start adding parts as soon as we save. I'm going to call it Table 2, because I already have Table 1. Save all the components. Now we are ready to click Design and Insert Frame. Uh, before we get started clicking, uh, let's look at what our options are here. Uh, we have all different categories of uh, tube that we can use. I'm going to use the, uh, the square tube here. Use the 2 by 2 by 1 8 And I can come over here and start clicking. Now take note of what happens when I first click, it centers this tube around the center point here. I have four options, or I have nine options of where I can put that. The easiest thing to work with is going to be the center point. So let's leave it on center point for now. And we just work our way around that skeleton, clicking on every line till we get them all in there. So they've all been selected. I'll click OK. It gives them these nice long names, unique numbers that it assigns to every part. 
as it creates them. We'll just say OK to that. There's all the files that it is creating. Say OK there, and now we have the basis of our skeleton. Let's look at one thing real quick. Notice I put the length of this table at 46 inches, but if I measure the overall length, I'm actually at 48. That's because I wanted a 48 inch table. I knew that I was going to be centered on a 2 inch tube, so I made that dimension 46 inches. I've got an inch of tube hanging off either end. Uh, on the height of the table here, I made it 23 inches, so I would have a 24 inch height because I don't have that extra inch at the bottom, but I do have that inch of tube above the center line of that sketch at the top. Now let's uh, use a few of the features within the frame generator to clean up this frame, make it look like something that we could actually build because obviously we can't make that corner. To make the skeleton invisible, we don't need it anymore. Now let's miter these top corners. Let's leave a 20 thousandths gap between them to give a little, uh, little wiggle room uh, for the weld. And we come in, click all four pieces around the top, say OK. It miters those corners for us and leaves that 20 thousandths gap. Now we need to trim the tops of these legs. See, they are extending up into the top frame. So that is trim. The first thing it wants us to do is to select a face that is going to be used to trim all of these. Once we select that one face, we can click all four legs because they are all coming up to that plane, even though they're not touching that uh, particular frame member. They're all coming up to that frame. Click OK. Uh, let's uh, repeat that trim. Let's click on this inside face, and that face will trim both of these rails down here. If we click the Apply button, uh, we don't have to restart the command. Uh, let's just work our way around. Click that inside face, those two rails, and apply. Spin it around. Click that inside face, those two rails. Apply that. See what's still going through. I've got this one right here. That inside face, that gets me those two rails. Let's see. I missed that one there. Let me try again. I just didn't click the right thing. Get that face. Click those two rails. Hit plus, and we're good. I can cancel that now. It looks like everything has been trimmed. Let's go back and look at our original table. Notice we have these uh, foot plates on here so we can attach the leveling feet. So that can be done with the end cap option. First thing we'll do, we'll select our faces. That still has some of the options in here from when I created that one before. But we'll go through and see what our options are. The option that I had selected here is to put it in the outward position, put it on the ends of the tubes, rather than setting it up inside. You can select if you want filleted, rounded corners, or if you want a chamfered corner. Let's make a chamfered corner with a quarter inch chamfer. The thickness of this I have set to half an inch, and I have it offset just a little bit larger than the profile of the tube. If that's at zero, it makes it flush on the sides. A negative number will make it a little bit bigger than the tube. Let's make it a quarter inch. Let's put a one in here, eighth inch, larger than the tube, all the way around. Say OK, it's going to create that part for us. And the last thing I need to do to these parts, let's create just a 2D sketch on the bottom there. I'm going to put a point right on the origin, finish that sketch, and create a half 13 hole. That's the option I already had selected from before. Create a half 13 hole through that plate, full depth, through all. Say OK. And now I have something to use to place the leveling feet. So let's finish edit on that. Hit save. Saves all of these parts that it has created. And now let's place the foot, which is in its own folder right here. One, two, three, four of those. And we'll just give that an insert constraint on each one of those. 
if you are to the point of learning to use frame generator and 3d sketching hopefully you already know how to assemble parts like this we'll leave that there maybe we'll give that frame a color and this one is done